All right, this will be part three of the porting the 2J VVTi cylinder. Uh, we've now got the intake bolted on. We're going to have a look at how bad the core shift is, and then we're going to match the intake to the cylinder head. Uh, that way our CSA is the same from the intake to the cylinder head, which means our airspeed will be consistent. So we can optimize that inertia mechanism. I'll also show you uh, how bad the core shift is generally in, in lots of cylinder heads and this is just another example and why uh, CNC can't actually compensate for that so you'll see the windows are off a, a fair amount we're able to actually port them and put little little twists in them balancing the CSA so that's that's our main target where a CNC can't do that that's why generally any good head portal will be able to beat a CNC uh, cylinder head especially with the OEM stuff uh, I'm not sure why this keeps coming up as a debate I, I only had a message about it the other day um, nearly all the, the really really good CNC heads are hand finished anyway you know just just to clean up but generally the the best way to CNC something is to cast the port small and they put a little uh, thumb casting in the in the head so it's basically a tiny tiny little port about the thickness of your thumb and then they can CNC any cross-sectional area depending on the RPM and, and um, your cubic capacity that you need. And this is what is very common in the two-valve industry, but not so much in the four-valve. And any OEM head, due to the core shift and the ports already being on size, the CNC can only make them bigger. So that's where they're losing that inertia mechanism. And that's why we, we see uh, such better horsepower gains by hand-porting OEM heads. So anyway, I'll show you what we're dealing with, and um, yeah, we'll go from here. So this is port number one. As you can see, we've got nearly 120 thou three mil step uh, towards the back, and and pretty much nothing at the front of that. Uh, the next port is not too bad. It's almost on target. Uh, this one, as you can see, is towards the front again a little bit. This one, not too bad. This one a little bit towards the back when it wants to focus. And this one again, yeah, it's towards the back. So as you can see, the molds move around a lot. So now we want to get the CSA of this manifold to match into the window now. So we're going to place the window. And once we place the window, then we're able to actually join the two paths together. So we know where the seat is, we can't change that, we can't change the window, but we can change the port. And that's what I talk about in making sure we get that cross-sectional area right. Um, even, if, even if it's a mil or two different to the other port, as long as the cross-sectional area is the same, then the airspeed will be the same. That's the most important thing. Uh, that's what we need to target on. And, and again, I shouldn't have to say it, but... Um, they never use a gasket. A gasket, we don't, we're not gasket matches, and I've seen some absolute abortions uh, come in where people have matched the gasket, and, and the entry is just way too big. That, that come from old two valve stuff like Chevys and stuff like that, where they, they put a gasket on. Generally, they were stroker engines, they were, they, they were going to turn them harder, so they needed a, a higher average cross sectional area. And the first place to hit them is the pinch around the push rod. Get that as big as you can and then work the rest of the report. But twin cams, modern engines, um, nothing like that old stuff. So, yeah, if you're gasket matching, stop it. Work the math out first. Work out what the actual size needs to be to support the RPM and the cubic capacity that you're going to be using the vehicle. Remember, horsepower doesn't come into this. It's airspeed. Um, whether you, and I've said it before, whether you're making 1,000 horsepower at 9 grand or 2,000 horsepower at 9 grand, that port will be exactly the same size. It will not change. It's because the RPM and the cubic capacity is the same. They're the dictators of velocity, not how much density, you know, not how much boost we put into that engine. Uh, that, that's, yeah, a lot of people tend to um, trip up on this concept or not quite understand it. No, one's a, one's a density modifier, the other one's a measurement of motion. We're targeting motion and inertia which reduces our pressure differential. So we make more horsepower per PSI, and that's the key. Uh, how, how easily and how well we fill the engine, uh, boost will only complement that. So additional pressure on top of atmospheric will only help that mechanism if we do it right. And the key is in the CSA, getting the size of the port right so you make horsepower. Uh, it's not about it being big. It's not about it making the best flow numbers on the flow bench, as I've said for years. 
Uh, now, nearly all my heads have lost flow over the years. So my RB heads are down 15 to 20 CFM, what they were, you know, two decades ago. That's because all I used to do was chase flow numbers, not understanding how to optimize that uh, inertia mechanism properly. Uh, and if the math is right, that's the best it's ever going to be. Um, you, you'll find little improvements in seat angles and stuff like that, but n nearly anyone who's got a bit of experience knows what seat angles they're going to run. Uh, so that really doesn't come into the equation anymore. We know what works. Um, so the key is balancing that cross-sectional area, getting it targeted for the RPM you need, not the horsepower you need. Uh, and yeah, definitely no gasket matching, none of that sort of stuff.